Well, hello and welcome to Old Trapper for this very special Betfred Love Rugby League Weekly. I'm very excited to be here, Dave. I've, I've just done uh, 12 chats with players. Very excited from all, all areas of uh, Yorkshire, Lancashire, uh, so France, the capital. You've so taught yourself horse, to be honest, haven't you, mate? Well, uh, <laughs> I have, we've got the, the Catalan um, Dragons logo behind us. We, we decided to go with Catalan because it's, it's um, the most neutral. It's the most neutral. We're, we're surrounded by all FC, Huddersfield Giants, Ulkar, Leeds, London, and Casper. So we've got, we got one Dragons. I think it's because Drew doesn't want to do another expansion blog, so he's going to put this on instead. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the Catalan Dragons logo behind us. It's, it's been um, a good event, hasn't it? I think uh, it's good to see uh, Ellie Hanley was here before. Very good to see him. He was very interesting. We're yeah. in better shape than when he retired. It's a magnificent shape, isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah, totally amazing. Yeah, I think um, obviously that was to announce the demand of steel and the new the way that Steve Prescott Man Steel is going to work next season. So Ellie Hanley's the chairman of uh, the Man of Steel voting panel. Let's explain it. Yeah, so there's, there's, I think you said there's 21, yeah, 21 ex players, players and coaches, and um, it's going to work on a 3 2 1 voting system throughout the season for each game. So, effectively, the best man of the match will get three points, next will get two, third will get one, and then over the season that'll be tied up. And with Man of Steel, I actually asked Danny Horton about it. I think, I think he's a pretty good candidate for it. He's someone who's consistent week yeah, in, right. week out. He'll right. probably you probably ch even if you don't churn up many threes, I bet he churns up plenty of two. Yeah, uh, always up there, isn't yeah, it? yeah. So, uh, but yeah, feel free to leave us a comment. Drew's going to get his phone out in a minute and uh, make sure we respond oh, to your any, comments. Any, any questions at all as well? Um, any questions? Any questions? Any questions? You, 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 you questions? Want to test our up ask, ask, ask us what we have for breakfast. Here, you want? Well, the, part of the reason Drew did so many interviews is because he skips lunch because he's on a strict diet. So, ah, right. Okay. He's got his attempt. He's got his attempt. He couldn't have the nice chicken. Curry that I had. Couldn't. It smelled nice. It was nice. I think it's a must smell it. Bangers and mash. Is that how you got the. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if we've had any comments. Well, I just thought that we could crack on with a bit of a format. So I thought, well, we also went to the Championship match on Tuesday over in York. What was that for you? Great venue. Yeah, it was good. It was nice to go to York. York's a beautiful place. I thought it was going to be season after the games. Um, it, was, it, it, it was over pretty quick, I didn't get a chance to speak to as many people as, uh, as, as I would have liked, but I um, spoke to a few people and, and you know, obviously from the first perspective to speak to, to Windows coach Kieran Burton and, and get their thoughts on the season. I think, I think everyone in rugby league is quite excited for the start of the season and you know, Super League particularly is it unpredictable, there's a lot of contenders, um, championship as well, you've got 14 teams and again You've got the Toronto thing, you've got the Toulouse thing, you've got Bradford, you've got Witness, you've got York, you know, there's it's loads of stuff. Yeah, and you know, even you I've know, got to put, put the mics closer, closer to the mirrors, we we sound very tinny around. Alright. Uh, okay. we, we've got a comment in all try and turning the microphones on. Uh, <laughs> but they're all on, we're just in a very, 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 very big room. It's a, a little bit different, yeah, so we, we sound like we're actually uh, doing this from a toilet and we're not. <laughs> yeah, and then and then obviously League One as well where I suppose there's not it's, it's anyone's to grab, isn't it? In League One, really, and you know Newcastle will fancy it, and, uh, but then you know the traditional Whitehaven workers in Doncaster, Unsworth, well, they all fancy it as well. I spoke to Newcastle coach uh, Jason Finn at the launch, and he certainly uh, reiterated his, his desire and his ambitions to, to get into the championship. So it, it seems like Funder are, are really striving towards uh, getting into into the second tier, and, and with the team that he's had this year. Uh, with Mr. Telpapa as captain as well. Um, it's possible that it, it, it's looking like they're one of my tips. But oh, I was saying today before, don't trust my tips. I tip Leicester City to, to get relegated from the Premier League the year they won it. So, uh, <laughs> I think, especially when you can see bring, bringing someone like Liam Finn in, though, who's been there, he's done that, right? he's a uh, well, you know, top point scorer yeah. championship level. Well, Liam Finn and Re Remy Marginet in the, in the halves is, is very good at especially at the League One level. And I think the I think the, the thing is the interesting this year is obviously it's the first year where we've had a proper up and down system between all leagues. So you know you've got up and down from Super League, up and down from Championship. So everyone's got something tangible to play for and, and work towards. The interesting thing for me is how Keithley will come on. 
because nobody's really speaking about Keith. Uh, and, and they're in a little bit of a situation where I believe there could be some positive news coming out in the next couple of days. I don't know whether the rugby league are uh, going to put this out at the moment, they're keeping things strictly under wraps, um, not really having the guys that are speaking to some sort of Yeah, I think it's a bit of a strange one, obviously. I mean, it needs sorting ASAP. I suppose the, the saving grace for them is that they at least got a few more weeks until the season starts. So. Um, and it sounds like Craig Lingard's having had a team together anyway, training, so it's just a formality maybe. Yeah, probably so, 20 minutes. Yeah, so, so when, when you consider that, it, everything it, that's it's, it's, it's obviously just the formalities of getting the team, you know, getting the sign up for the ownership and, you know, and seeing, seeing how it all comes together. And, you know, like I say, we heard Mermans that oh, they were open to have it sorted this week, so fingers crossed for Keithley, and uh, that would be good to, to sort of bury that sort of drought. I think it'd be good for League One if you if you can get a competitive league to do out. You know, obviously West Wales are a lot stronger. Uh, they be a lot stronger this year. They're the great one, um, really, yeah. yeah, and you know, Kim Williams. Uh, you know, he's got a. An interesting job, but even Coventry as well. It'd be nice if the teams, if there's not like, it's not like two or three left at the bottom, if you know what I mean. So, um, but yeah, an exciting season all round. We've got a couple of questions there. Yeah. Um, what do we think of Swinton's or Clues' season as a sign? So the, 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 the pick of the bunch is you know, obviously um, Oscar Thomas, the Scotland potential. Well, I wouldn't concentrate on that because what Swinton have done, they've brought a lot of young players from the amateur game. Started last season, late last season, with the recruitment to Ryan Gray from the East. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how some of them young guys go. So, some of them are, are getting a second goal at the same professional rugby league. That's like Frankie Holton, for example. Uh, others, brand new at it. Uh, now let's check in Thomas and his international experience. And obviously, we've signed Furco. Which I think is a brilliant sign. And he's he's such a good guy to talk to as well. So I mean, like the big thing here at the Super League launch has been about new beginnings. It's been about putting players from centre and future about everything going forward. And there's a few of these guys in the championship. And Rob Furman is certainly one of those. I mean, I think you know, like I say, I mean, Davey probably know much more about Swinton's players than, than I do. I think probably looking at their team paper I would probably say that they're going to be probably favourites for relegation but then at the same time I think the thing is when you get young players if you're never quite sure you know it might go one you know if they play to their potential you know their potential could be huge and you know that might be might prove the difference I think the thing with Swinton is that they, they're a lot more stable off the field aren't yes. they and yeah. certainly the environment and the culture and, and everything that the club are creating around Swinton I think that'll be beneficial I really like going to games at, at Hayley Road. I think it's a nice... Uh, it's a traditional venue, isn't yeah, it? It's a decent little set Yeah, it's a road. decent setup. yeah. And, um, I think if they can get a few wins on the board early doors and get the confidence up, then, you know, they might do OK. Um, I think last, they obviously got a bit of a... Both of them and Rochdale got a little bit of a reprieve last year, didn't they, because of the, the change in format. Uh, I think both of those teams really... Um, they struggled against the teams around them, and I think that's where... You know, them, them games, you know, against your Dewsbury's and Sheffield, they're the games that you're going to have to really um, pick out and win this year. And, and of course, different format, we were talking about the different format too, Super League, the different format championships actually going to affect you massively as well because you, you're not playing, whereas in the Championship Shield you're just playing the teams directly above you, you're now playing everyone twice across a bigger league, which might actually suit Swinton and Boxdale a little bit better because it's like if you lose to your closest rivals three times, like you were in the Championship Shield days, it's an even bigger task than if you've lost to them twice, if that makes sense. We've still got an extra game in the calendar though with what's happening at Blackpool. Yeah, yeah. The, the bash, so some teams will play each other three times. And yeah, I think it's really play Rochdale, don't they? Do. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking so. Liam Witness, they're going to be sick of the sight of each other this season, although I'm nothing against Back. Kieran Perth at all. It was interesting actually speaking to John Duffy on Tuesday, he doesn't, he doesn't seem to, I mean I think he was probably deliberately playing things down, but he's, he wasn't even talking about top five, he was just thinking, oh we just want to... I, th I think we could, could make it into that top five. I think they could. They've got 21 signed players though. Well then yeah, they've all, 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 all got a few 
rise in stars, but I mean, real yeah. promising stars of the rising stars of the game. Yeah, yeah. what's impossible to get in Jamie Bentley, who obviously was a standout at Rock and Bowls a couple of seasons ago. Um, probably the likes of Jack Ashworth might be going. Uh, you might see definitely um, this season, the likes of Chat Wells being made his debut and was fantastic for England Academy in the autumn. So I don't although they've only got twenty one players registered, I, I think obviously with the search boys winning on on dual reg, I think it'll go very well. As a Leaf fan, I'd be happy with anything for Leaf. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Just yeah, as long as we're still championship. There actually. are there yeah. yeah. are it's, it's, it's all about it's a transition year, isn't it, for the club this year and it's it's just about like, Maintaining, uh, uh, still, I, 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 I honestly think Leo will do well. I think Leo will get top five. I think Leo will get top five. But, uh, you know, it was interesting to speak to, uh, I spoke to Ryan, Ryan Carr, uh, the Feminist coach, um, for quite a bit as well. And, 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 he's only a young guy. Yeah, he's only a young guy. Yeah, and he seems pretty. Uh, he, he thinks there's going to be a little bending in time, so Benson might get off to a slow start. But, I think generally he's quite happy with the squad that he's, he's got together. Can you afford to get off to a slow start though? I mean, I was looking at the first three minutes with this player, for example. Mm. I'm, you not, know. I'm not too sure about Featherstone, to be fair. Uh, they seem, I, think, I think they were struggling. Uh, we don't know too much about Ryan Carr, the new coach coming in. Um, they, made, they made a few decent signs, obviously, the fact that Gideon was coming in. I think um, it'll be a bit more bit behind days after that. I think, yeah, that, that's what I was going to touch on. It, it's it's a, a weird one with that because if it, the fantastic art backs and they come in and flourish, um, fantastic. But there's a, bit, a good chance of it going the, the opposite yeah. way as well. It's, 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 it's an hard one. And when your arms aren't performing, then, then the, the rest of the team aren't performing. Now, you mentioned it happened in New Guinea. I mean, they've got a league of all nations of the barrel as well, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that picture That's of. Uh, is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it Mitzing with the guy they've got a barrel? Minorga. Minorga, sorry, yeah. I've seen him in the snow. Yeah, very good. I've seen him in the snow at Craven Park. <laughs> Sorry, it took at, at, at Craven Park on Tuesday in the snow, whatever night it was, which is interesting. I mean, but, you know, I think, I think with the championship, you've very much got, I think, you've got almost like a top half and a bottom half, and I don't think there's much to choose between the top half, and there's not much to choose between the bottom half. So, uh, and teams like Bar Barrow, we mentioned about the start, Barrow had a brilliant start last season, and that really, like, if they hadn't had that start, I'm sure they would have been battling down there, but they've got that, because they had such a good start, they were, they were basically, such they, were basically words, yeah, they were basically just settled in the table, weren't they? They never were never troubled, they were never even close to the bottom of the relegation places or anything barrel because they started that well, they had the points on the board and it, I think it took it took it took a long part of the season for Sheffield and Jesus to be able to get close to them. Um, talking of Sheffield, I mean they totally revamped their squad. Mark aston has got some good numbers there, hasn't he? Yeah, so he has, he has, and that's what Sheffield have had to struggle with in, in recent years. They've always had a decent one to seventeen, but the, 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 the squad depth has, has been very, very thin over the last couple of years. But that doesn't seem to be the case. They've recruited obviously a few trials as well, and they've offered them deals. But uh, the, the one that stands out for me is uh, Anthony Fakir, a fantastic signing, and when I when I'm uh, seeing him. Uh, quite a few times, and it always impressed me. He's got a decent little short picking game as well. I think he'll gather around the park pretty well. Uh, obviously, he's got the, the likes of Blackmore as well. They'll go very, very well for the Eagles. I think, I think they'll have a better team than the Eagles. It's an interesting chip, isn't it, Shepard? Because obviously, last year and, and I think the season before, they're very reliant on the St. Helens partnership, weren't they? I've heard a lot of St. Helens youngsters, so very interesting to see thinking and, and whether that affects, you know, whether Mark Aston has experienced that and thought, oh, you know, maybe it doesn't work bringing in these players that aren't in the unit from, from day one. Uh, don't forget, Sheffield has been won the championship twice in the last 10 years. Um, you know, so Mark Aston knows, knows what to do in, in the division. And, um, you know, they've got the new ground now and of course it's still a long way from where they want it to be. But, um, no, things are generally coming together for them now, so... We've got a, we've got a couple of comments on Super League as well, though, so we'll come on to that. We will come on to Super League, yeah. I mean, we've got, we've got three or four teams to look at. We looked at four last time, yeah. Uh, Derek said, again, with the, uh, 
who obviously I spoke to yeah. before, Derek said again with your thoughts on Lee, uh, John Duffy has made some brilliant signings, especially Martin Rudyard. Uh, Andrew Clifford said uh, Halifax with the squad they have should finish in the top five. Oh, to be honest, yeah. In the championship? Oh, we no, haven't, I we haven't think... mentioned Halifax no, at all, have we? No, no, they, they always do. fly under the radar. They do, they do. We never talk about them. But they all, they're always there, there thereabouts. Yeah, they, they are. In, what, I, what I like about Halifax, but obviously we've mentioned it a few times on the show, I love what they do with the reserves and, and the... Oh, you're getting on reserve guy off again. <laughs> oh. they, give, they, give, they, they give players who are fellows who are uh, under 19 uh, ranks uh, a chance, and it's great to see him flourishing through the factory. I think, I think Halifax, I'm, I'm just trying to top it and me five, but Halifax certainly, uh, I think... Uh, We're still swimming uh, in Yeah, they're certainly in there, isn't they? Top five, I reckon. Uh, I, must, I must have changed my prediction at uh, least eight to nine times. Yeah, uh, it'll be different it'll again next week. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be it someone else who'll sign somebody. I think, I think, you've, got, I think you've got them seven, haven't you? I think those yeah. are the seven that. Uh, it's, it's like when um, you, you have like an MP4 uh, final on your computer and it's saved as brackets final version and then it goes on the final final version and then you've got a version 2 final and then another <laughs> final final latest edition <laughs> so, it's, so they're, they're kind of like have you, been looking at, have you been looking at my editing from when we were this on because you know, it's like I used to edit and like yeah I'll be with that oh no no I've done a bit there I've done a bit there <laughs> But um, yeah, so we, we've got quite a few comments. I think yeah. Halifax are definitely at the uh, top five. Fire at us. What, what are these comments? Well, Come on, keep well, them coming. Go Super League now. Most of them are Super League. Let's go Super League. We're going Super League. Right, let's go Super League. So obviously we're here at the uh, launch. Chuck a couple of these comments out. Well, well, Jason Bezik, I think he's a Warrington fan. He said, yeah. why to win everything? Uh, I, I think they'll do well, but I don't think they'll win everything. We discussed Warrington at some point last we time did. around. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, even... Even Betfred have, have put. Um, yeah, Warrington and Saints joint favourite. Yeah, 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 and they've put. Thanks for the sponsorship, Betfred. Yeah, yeah. Nice, mon- nice mention for Blake Austin for favourite for the Steelers. Uh, well. He wasn't putting pressure on him, was he? He no. spoke in front of the crowd here. It was a packed media event. Um, and he's, he's, he said the same thing to you. He thanked, not, yeah, he, he thanked Betfred for the embarrassing him, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think he's, he's right to be fair, right? Superstar in the NRL, it's only right that he's uh, his favourite from Man of Steel, but even with right. the other time you've got, I think, I think if they haven't, haven't recruited big names like Jason Clark and uh, Blake Austin, uh, Jim, I'm all getting more of a mention because he's he's been playing for years. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah
I spoke to my, my car quite a bit at the Super League 3 team and if you look at what we've done over the past few years, I think this win has probably been their best year of recruitment in terms of if you look what they've added, you've got Cop Jack, George King, you can both play long minutes, which might be which might be important with the reduced interchange. You've got Danny Brook, who's you know he's a he's a, ma he's a proven match winner, he's a prolific. And, and Chris Chester actually said that he said one of the reasons with Brook is that they they lost a few games by a few points last year. Yeah. That potentially Danny Brook could get them all over the edge. It's going to be interesting to see that combination between Miller and uh, Brook and yeah, it's Obviously, Hampshire will be involved, but we expect uh, Ryan Hampshire to be. Well, I expect Ryan Hampshire to, to be the number one uh, full-back. A uh, couple more comments, uh, well, like everyone, I think we've got quite a few Warrington fans watching the work, come on the wire. Um, so, you yeah. Could for the next one. A, a few, a few yeah, we could have, we could have, yeah, we have could have be in Warrington and have yeah. an audience, that's a good idea. A few people <laughs> are giving us a bit of, a bit of stick about the zone. We can't, we can't, we can't, we're, we're, at, we're about five floors up in Old Trafford. And it's a very, very big room. It's very echoey room. Yeah, it's just one of those things. Uh, but I'll say, we'll, we'll see what we can do in post production. But, uh, but so, 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 who have we got then? What four teams are we looking at, Dave? Uh, well, funnily enough, let's go with your Diamond Geezer from Leeds. Oh, Leeds, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right, okay. So, I mean, you, you, look at, you look at them. I mean, but we've got him very, very well. To a little league, looking forward to seeing him. Oh, yeah. I, I've seen him quite a few times. I enjoy watching the NRL. I watch roughly a game a, a week. Um, seen him a few times last season. I obviously, seen him for, for Tonga as well in the, the World Cup. Fantastic player. He'll bring that, that bit of X factor uh, to Leeds. He, he's got a good step on him. Uh, he's got a, a very good one and uh, a, a very good addition. Richie Marr will be the ball, the, the kind of the, the organiser. Can he organise? Well, uh, because I would always put I would always put Milo as more of a runner than an organiser. Well, that's what I think. I think Milo will be the organiser rather than Lower Heat. Uh, at least this season, I think Lower Heat has got to be the runner um, because that's what he's best at. Um, and Milo will take that role and be the organiser. Don't tell me you're going to sign two halfbacks. That's uh, exactly right. We've seen it quite plenty of times before. Yeah. 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 Yeah, time will tell, I suppose. I'm looking forward to seeing Jack Walker. Apparently, he's booked up over the close season. Um, pushed himself in front of Ashton Golding last year. Uh, do you expect that to carry on? Yeah, I think so. I think we, we all know what a special talent Jack Walker is. He's a sensational player. I think it, uh, obviously, he seems to get knocked quite a bit in games, but that's probably just because of his, his size, really. Uh, more than anything, he seems to, to get, get a, a lot of knocks. But I think he, he's got a He's a superstar, isn't he? Jack Walker, I think. He's a superstar. He'll be, you know, you'd imagine at this event next year, he'll probably be one of the faces, yeah. I would imagine. Uh, James Trent Merry, what do you reckon about him coming in? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean obviously Leeds. Sportsman before as well, a great Yeah, but it's, a, it's an interesting one with Leeds because obviously they've had these two poor seasons by their standards, either side of the grand final win. Um, the team probably did need rebuilding a little bit, and obviously you got a new coach. and. You know they've made you know Trent Merrin and, and Tom Apple, yeah. you know as well as all here, you know very high profile quality signings. And, um, you know Dave Ferner will want to get his own, um, put his own stamp on the team. And you'd imagine Merrin's a bit like a Dave Ferner yeah. type player, isn't it? Um, Interesting that uh, Dave Ferner's kind of downplayed Leeds impacts this season, hasn't he? He's concentrating on getting them gelling as a team. Yeah, well, I think they, 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 I mean the way last season went, they sort of fell apart a little bit, didn't they? Uh, you know, they have, they went on really poor. I think they only, they only win two two games against Super League teams, and that, that was both Witness against Witness. I think in a run of like 17, 18 games. So um, they they lost away a bit last season. It has to be said, but they've addressed that with the recruitment. And like I say, I mean, I think with a new coach and with a new team, you've got to give time for for it to gel a little bit. And um, you know, I think probably leads probably. I'd imagine Ferns probably thinking, let's just make the top five. Yeah. You know, he's not thinking but, about but, finishing top. But I asked, I asked Ferns before, and uh, I asked him, who's the pressure, who you didn't really know about him. He said, all the young kids that lead it. He, he said, uh, all the young players did very, very well. They were like some job off. Ash Hamlin was there, it was mentioned as well. Uh, it impressed him. Too. To be fair with Ash Hamlin, it's about time he started pushing towards because he's been in and around that yeah. league team for about well, four years he's, now. He's, he's played centre as well, hasn't he, quite a few times, uh, more recently rather than 
and on the wing, so that, that impossible. I think that's what I think he starts on the wing. I think that's the thing with Hanley and Sutcliffe, and maybe to a lesser extent Stevie Ward, because Stevie Ward's a you know, really good player. I think Hanley, Sutcliffe, maybe, uh, not Walker necessarily, because he's already at that level, but them players have got to step up to that next level. You know, Sutcliffe has talked about as succeeding in Sinfield or whatever, and you know, he, he's, I'm not denying he's a good player, but as he's he taken up yeah, as he, as he take that next, a bit like Brad Singleton, I know Singleton had to go elsewhere and then come back. He's, I'd say that he's pushed himself to that next level now. Um, and it's up to the other players to, to sort of do the same. The good thing about this lead squad is the fact that it's, it's really heavy on numbers, isn't it? I mean, they've got squad numbers going right up to 35. They've had, they added Mui Mustafa just before Christmas, Fantastic didn't they? Player. Who, you know, we've got break, right? I hope he gets his, his chance this year. I hope he makes his Super League debut because he's a fantastic player. I've seen him a few times. Obviously, he's shown for England the academy against the school board and really mixed it up with the, with the old um, but I've seen him in the under 19 Academy Grand Final for the Leeds Rhinos in the defeat to Wigan. He was by far Leeds' best player that day. I think, I think the thing with Leeds is the much maligned reserve slash dual red system is Leeds are the, the, the team that have made it work the best, haven't they? And you look at, you know, you look at throughout that Leeds squad. They've got players who've been able to play for Featherstone on a regular basis, being able to play for Hunter on a regular basis. You know, even Harry Newman. Could, could, could Cameron King play for Leeds? No, I'm not sure about that. Oh, we're not going down. We're not going down. Harry, Harry Newman's a good example of someone, what is he, 16, 17, or he was last season, and he's, yeah, playing, yeah, he's yeah. playing a few games for Featherstone. So that means now, if Leeds chuck him in, after chuck him in for whatever reason this season, he, you know, he's got that experience. He's got something like 14 tries in 14 yeah. games. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see a big, big, big year for Brad Byer at Leeds this, this season, because uh, obviously he's in and out to the side of uh, McDermott. Um, when I when he originally joined Leeds from Warrington, I thought, wow, that's that's a very, very impressive sound. And Dwyer and Parcel is interchanging up, that's fantastic. He's not quite done it in the lead shirt yet, but he's, he's a really, really good player. Um, I rate him quite a bit, and it's a, a big deal. Because if it's been the work out this year, what happens for him with the Rhinos? Uh, we're going from a team with lots and lots of numbers to a team that, well, it's, it's a little bit short on numbers, Salford, mm. but some quality in the <laughs> is, it, is there only a total of 25 players? That's yeah. right, yeah. Uh, yeah. And are, are, are these dual reds with anyone? Uh, I've not read I, 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 I don't think they will be because they, they won't have well, any to, to put out. But, uh, but you look at it and well, there's 17. Sam, but, really yeah, good. It, it, it sound well. The, the squad on paper is very impressive. Sports to me in Watson last week at the, the sort of media day. Um, he admitted that it's, it's short, but he said that we, yeah. we, we, we won't have a short budget. We, we've tried to get strength in depth rather than. Uh, it, they've, they've gone for quality rather than quantity. Because if, if you look even at the latter. Uh, numbers in the squad that's still impressive. Yeah, they've got, they've got, they've got, even though they've got 25, they've got 25 decent levels. It's not Two like, they've, yeah, they've places. not got yeah. 18 and then it, it dips off. Yeah. You know, you look at, you know, obviously they've, they've taken a few punts, so like Adam Lawton's a, a bit of a punt. Um, Daniel Murray, we've seen quite a few times in Championship Rally. Yeah, good player, know, Yeah, can he, can he step up? Um, the, I suppose the issue for Salford, but then having said that, it's an issue for everyone, is what happens if you get a few injuries. Um, you know, how much does that disrupt them? How much flexibility, you know, by sounds of it, there's no money to sign anybody else. So if you do get an injury, you know, where, you know, what do you do? What do you do well, then? Well, was that, was are they the one of the clubs which is developing a Category 3 academy? Yeah, they are, they are, yeah. Um, and, and we've seen Conor Davis Aspie uh, play for Salford in, in the two pre-season friendlies against Swinton and Wigan. He impressed in the, in the game against Swinton, uh, got quite a bit of game time, played alongside, obviously. And Jackson yeah. Aces, which is fantastic for himself. And it's a good little story about Conor Davis has to be actually. Uh, Wigan won, um, and he actually designed the under 19 skit for, for Wigan two years ago. Uh, he went over to the area offices in Italy, helped the kit get made, um, and the, the under 19 played. And it, it was in the, the Warriors Academy originally, I think he got let go, um, and played it. I think he went to Saints as well, and he got let go from there, and he's, a, he's arrived at Salford now. Uh, it seems to be like he's uh, found his feet, if you like, um, and he's, he's enjoying it at all. But I did speak to Ian Watson, and Watson said that it's probably looking like he'll, he'll go to a league or a, a championship team just to get that bit of experience. I know sometimes we shouldn't maybe pay as much attention to squad numbers, 
But in Salford's case, I think it's, a, it's an interesting one because Josh uh, Wood has pushed himself to be number nine jersey. That's surely based on his performances at the end of last season. Yeah, that, Ian Watson said that. He said he fully deserves it for his performances last season. And what I like about Wood is he's versatile. He can, he can play at nine and he can play in the arms as well as needed. Uh, what I like about him is just that the ability to play. He's, a, he, he's not a, a superstar. He's not a Jack Nason, but he, he works, he's absolutely not so. Um, it, it'll, it'll leave no so. And, and of course there's nine levels as well. He, he was just progressed and progressed. Yeah. Uh, again, he's always going to score tries, isn't he? Huge fan of, huge fan of nine levels. He can come up with something from absolutely nothing. You didn't ask, you didn't ask uh, Ian Watson about him. Did he just give that comment? No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lock yeah he, he just gave that comment. I said, um, oh, all right, I said, I said, you did prompt him. So no, just no. remind you. <laughs> We've had this before, haven't we? No. With, uh, but, uh, but no, I, I didn't ask him anything. It's I, not the great, I, I next just, great Eden, is it? No. <laughs> I, th I think I think I just asked him who's right for you and he came out with it, came out with that line and I ran with it. It was it was quite a good line to be fair. Um, being compared to Darren Lockett it must be a, a big compliment. But he's, he's fantastic now. Level D, very underrated for me. Um, I don't think that a lot of people uh, pay much, too much attention to him. Probably because he plays for Salford and stuff like that, which I think is a bit uncalled really. But he's a, a good player. A lot of time. I like a lot of stuff that Salford are doing both on social media this year and they seem to really involve people. Speaking to the likes of Lee Mossop here at the event today, he was saying it's a big family though, so although they've, they've short the numbers. Well I think that's what you've got to be like at the lower teams, haven't you? And I think that's what Wakefield has managed to do in, in the last few years, is they've really built a, a culture and, and made their players want to play there. And you know, I, I was speaking to Tom Johnston and he was saying all the players they want to stay away from the Winston from there now because they've all bought into the to the ethos and put into the club and, and that's what you want and that's what fans want as well most importantly they don't want players just turning up for the money and, and going they want people who want to care about the club who get to the community you know Drew's a massive Jackson Ace Vince fan you know the things that he's done in the, in the community yeah, over, the, over the close season doing and that's what that's, what, that's what it's you know, that's what it's all about you know everyone you know certain clubs go on about community work that's the true community work stuff like that he was a man in demand today by the way wasn't he Jackson Ace every time I looked up there was about three or four people yeah I, did, I didn't speak to him today because I, I think I you tune his ear off yeah, I'm very, I tune his ear off. I think I got about a 12 minute chat with him Did a you? few weeks ago, yeah, so... Um, glad I wasn't behind Drew in the queue then. Yeah. I'd, be, I'd be wound up after yeah. that. It, to be fair though, he speaks, he speaks very passionately yeah. about, about uh, Salford, he, he loves it at the club, but what I, what I just uh, really admire about him is his community work. He, he goes to uh, Holly Lane, uh, off his own back, the club don't ask him to go, he goes on his, on his own, alongside the music. They do some training drills, they teach the youngsters um, just just some skills, some rugby skills. But it's it's that impression that he gives off, I think, I feel, because I remember when I, I used to play as a junior and when, when like, we were players came to our training and, and ran drills, and it's like, wow, like, I'm, a, I'm a Terry Newton's teaching me, do you know what I mean? It's, it's that kind of stuff that sticks along in the memory. Um, on then. Oh, let's move on yeah. to the next uh, the next one, Huddersfield. What do you reckon about Huddersfield? They're, they're th again, thick on numbers this season. Yeah, it's an interesting one. And, um, obviously, they've lost McGillivray for a couple of months, which is a huge blow. A bit of a blow. We've got the senior boys yes. to, to hopefully fill his boots, or, or it could possibly bring a better in. Uh, Scott Brick to put him at four back and shift down on McIntosh back to the wing. I'd, be, I'd, 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 I'd probably. I'd probably tip that to happen maybe, yeah, I'm not sure. I suppose I had a, I had a good chat with with Sam Walker to be fair. Uh, you know, he's obviously in the process of rebuilding the team, yeah. you know, he took over and of course, you know, in a salary cap situation, it's very difficult to just say, right, we want all you gone, we want new ones in. So he seems fairly content with what he's got. Obviously he's got Matt Frawley, who's a hard bat that not many of us know a great deal about and he's got big boots to fill um, in Danny Brook. Especially when Brook's been there as well. Yeah, and you know, I think Wolford's um, he was quite pragmatic about that. He's not expecting, you know, he's, he's ex for his own player, he does his own thing. Well, um, you got Holly up interesting, uh, interesting. Well, this feels a really interesting one, I think, because you've got players in certain positions mm -hmm. and you're thinking, oh, you know, how, how will that all come together? So there'll be a, an interesting one to watch. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously they're bringing in the likes of Akuali Uati as well, superstar of the Australian game, uh, one of the most spectacular players we've seen in the last 10 years of NRL. 
Yeah, well, you know, and I think he's a, he'd be great. It'd be great when McGill be fit and got them two on the wings. I mean, that that'd be brilliant. Oati's a really good signing. Um, I think the the most interesting about Huddersfield is the the, the Epo situation. Um, where How must he feel? It, it's like well, he's gone from being a dream team yeah. to being like it's like they want to get rid of him. Um, now, are they trying to get rid of him because they want the space on the cap to sign somewhere else? Is it that the coach doesn't like him? Has something else gone on that we don't know about? He was one of the most talked about players in the off season, wasn't he? Yeah, it, it was in the it was in the dream team not to uh, twenty seventeen yeah, yeah two years so, ago so, so he's a uh, fantastic forward so it's, it's going to be interesting to see what's going on there and, and if he's going to do it in the twenty six yeah if he's been given a, a, a number of rights at the back end it's it's, it's what, what's weird. what's happened because you would have thought he would have just got the number eight or whatever he had in the so I think there's a lot of honesty in, uh, in this Huddersfield team you know you're looking like some Michael Lawrence ten years. Uh, Ten years of first team playing there, and um, you know celebrating his testimonial. Yeah, yeah. I think you, it, I think what worries me a little bit is you've got you've got that honesty, like you say, but you've also got injuries. Right. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I think I think if you look, if you run down that list, especially like Kudjo's out to start season, McGill was already injured. Turner's had his injury problems. Gaskell's had his injury problems. Clubs had his injury problems. And yeah. It's like if they get a couple of them break down. It, well, an interesting one as well is that Aaron Murphy's been named at 11 this year. Now, he's been so used to playing out on the no, wing. No, to, 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 to be first, he was in the back. Uh, he did play a bit at back, back row. He, play, he played at back row. And I, I remember reporting on the Magic Weekend game, Huddersfield versus Wakey, I think it was. And um, and Murphy made his, well, made his debut at back row, shall we say. Okay. Um, and he stood out. And I, I remember giving him the, the star man because he... he can you say that? Really, just after yeah. one. Sorry, we, might, we might have to leave the pull for next week. Because you reckon? And we're not, they're they're getting dismantled around. Well, they are packing up sorted. around us, but let's uh, let's still crack on then. If you want to leave pull for next week, then we certainly can. Yeah, we'll, we'll do, we'll we'll do, do five, five teams next week. Next week. Yeah, next uh, Jason also says that I think Danny Walker is going to be a great player for Wanga. What's your thoughts? He's um, in this year as well. I'd agree. I think he's think, quite think dynamic. Play, but do you think he'll play much this year? Very promising player, but. I think he'll play in certain games. Yeah, he might get. I don't think he'll play every week. But I think he might get ten or twelve hundred. Yeah, it's going to be Blake Hodgson and Kevin Brown in the arms, isn't it? And Clark, with and obviously Clark, play with, eight Clark, with yeah. Clark nine. Obviously, they have put Declan Patton on the bench as well. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, because we're expecting Patton to go on to do better things. Mm-hmm. Aren't we at Warrington? So it's going to be interesting to see where uh, Steve Price goes in his options in terms of getting that number fourteen on the bench. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to talk Challenge Cup because we finally got a sponsor, uh, the Coral Challenge Cup. This, of course, being uh, the Betfred Love Rugby League weekly, of course. Yeah. Uh, but let's give it a big up. They've come yeah, in. obviously always good to get sponsors, isn't it? Right. No matter who they are. Um, yeah. And I wanted to run through the draw as well. You're not okay. going to go for all 26 games? Yes, I am. Oh, here we go. Yes, I am. But I'm going to start with the Sunday games because there's only three of those. Oh, right. So on Sunday, it's North Hearts Crusaders taking on the Royal Air Force. Lock Lane taking on Longhorns of Ireland and uh, Millam against Red Star Belgrade, which you'll be able to catch on BBC online. Uh, that's kicking off at half past one. Um, I'm looking forward to watching that to be fair. Yeah. It'd, be, it'd just be interesting to see what Serbians are like, do you know what I mean? Just to see like what the, I hope that it is a competitive game. Do you know what I mean? I hope I hope that they really make a fist of it and it's not, you know, a one sided because obviously we ha- we haven't really got a clue, have we? We don't no, know we what sort of level they're at. You know, they, they might wipe the floor with Millen for all we know. Do you know what I mean? In theory. So it'd be really fascinating from that point of view to see how that game goes. Uh, and as you know, I love my uh, amateur rugby league. So it's Kells against Rochdale Mayfield. Oral yeah. St James against Underback yeah. Rangers, which is going to be live on the Our League app this uh, coming Saturday. West Bowling at home to Hammersmith Hills Hoists from London. Uh, Dewsbury Moor take on Skirlet. Interesting game that for Dewsbury Moor because Danny Morn has just taken over as head coach there. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they go. East Leeds are at home to Batley Boys, the new boys coming into the uh, National Conference League 3. Wigan St Jude's at home to Crossfields. That's a massive game that. Wigan Warrington Derby. I think if, if, if the weather's not kind of where I'm going to be, I might go to that one. Up the Jude's. Uh, Bentley take on the army. It's the Royal Navy taking on West Hull. Should be an interesting tie in itself. Driglington at home to the Old Golds. Uh, Welshside, Toffee and Tigers travel up to Dissington in Cumbria. The Dissington, that's what I said. I'm, 
I've got a bit of Cumbrian love going on after yeah. being on tour with Talking Cumbrians. Might, might have to regionalise this draw the way things are going. Shawcross Sharks are at home to Haydock. Ovenden take on Wolston Rovers. Featherston Lions travel over to Hunslet Warriors. Bit of love, that'd be that one. Should be fascinating time itself. York Acorn at home to Beverly. That's uh, again, a bit of a local derby between those two. Uh, Normanton Knights against Edinburgh Eagles. Bradford Dudley Hill at home to Milford Marlins. Clockface Miners at home to Sydney. Again, that's Clockface's first ever Challenge Cup tie, so right. they're making a history coming into the uh, competition this year. Hunslet Club Parkside, who've played against three semi-professional teams Your in the build yeah. to the season. Uh, led by my mate, Big Skip. That's Jamie Fields. Uh, top bloke, top bloke. And uh, they're going to be playing against Thornhill Trojans. Sato Heath Crusaders have an interesting time at Stanley. We wipe the floor with everyone at Conference 2 last season. London Chargers are home to Wathrow Hornets. All those kicking off at 2pm. And then your half past two kickoffs. You're like this one, Drew. Lee Miners Rangers against Wilton Raiders. Walls End Eagles take on the British Police Force. And Lee East are home to Wigan St. Pat's. And what they're playing for there is who hosts the second round draw which will take place on Monday night. Mickey Iam and George Williams making the draw as well there. Yeah, I think that's it, but we better wind up before uh, we get packed up. I think we're the last one. Yeah, we are. You can probably hear us far better now, right? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so thanks for bearing with us. Uh, we'll see you again this time, actually. Yeah, please do leave your comments and shares and, and everything like that. But yeah, thanks.